All right, so our project uh, is basically, this is what we ended up with last time, and we need to do now more things to finally distribute it. Um, what I want to look at this point is um, the, the project all along has been called example. And as I said, in this class, the third class, now we actually want it to have a meaningful name, specifically your name. So everyone's app is going to have their name. And so we need to go through the process of renaming our project. Remember, we did that a while ago in the previous month, early on, where we had the example project and we renamed it. So it is on a previous handout, but we'll do it again together, because at this point I want my own unique project. Um, so remember we've got in several places the old name we've got the name in the actual project itself which Eclipse sees We've got a name in the Android manifest file, which is what Google sees. We've got a name internally here. And we've also got a name in the values, in, in the strings in there. So we've got those four things to change. Uh, so I'm going to start with the, the name of the whole project here in Eclipse. So under example project, you're going to right click it, refactor, rename. And here you're going to put your last name and then the name of the project. Question? Yeah, as you go through this, can you tell us? In some of these, we're allowed to use capitals and spaces, and some of them are not. Yes. Um, yeah, as, as we do them, we'll see. Um, on this one, that's a good point. Uh, this one... Uh, I, honestly, I forgot about this one. Does Eclipse care about spaces in our files? Well, it'll tell us if, if, it's, if it's wrong. But you, what you want to do here is uh, put your last name and then the name of the app. It's no longer going to be the example app. You want your last name. My SDC. That's my name of my app. So I'm going to click OK. Invalid name where? My last name. Mm -hmm. If I start with the capital, it says it's an invalid name. I think that's because you have a space. Mm -hmm. Are you. Something else after it, it should not be. You're sure you're renaming just your project up here? That's yeah. what I renamed. Um, okay, uh, if it's a warning, okay, let's, um, let's proceed at that point. Next, let's rename the project internally in the Android manifest right here. So double-click Android manifest XML. And then the screen will show you here your package name. That's the old name as well. So that we're going to rename to com dot your last name. This is all lowercase. This one has to be lowercase. And then the name of the app, all lowercase. My SDCE. Just a moment. Actually, I meant here your last name and then the name of their app. This one you're only going to double click. And then when it loads up here, you'll name it like that. Now, this name, the 
com.campos is a reverse domain name. We've seen this before a while ago. Our memories are probably rusty. But this is the unique identifier, your package name for your project. I don't really own campos.com. I have pimdinteractive.com. But for the purposes of this class, we'll be fine with this. We don't really need to own the domain name. We just need this unique identifier. So it's com your last name. You could do .net if you want, .biz, whatever. Um, if you do actually have your website, you might want to use it. So com.campos. And then the name of the project. And here it's lowercase with no spaces. And then it's up there, like campos capital, is in all those capitals. But here we want it lowercase. We'll look at in more detail this manifest file a little bit later. There's a lot of things we want to look at here. Uh, but this is all we need at this point. We want to, we're going to reuse that name elsewhere. So actually, I'm going to copy it. What I wrote here, I'm going to copy it in case so that I don't misspell it elsewhere. And then I'll save the file. It might pop up about your manifest uh, change and your launch configuration. Just click yes. Where did you click save? How do you save a file? You want to save the file. File save. Now, you might get the red warnings. Don't worry just yet, because we have a few other things we need to change. But I saved my manifest file, and I'm going to close it. What also needs to be changed that, to that same name is inside this SRC folder source. That's got the wrong name still. For that resource, you're going to right-click that one and refactor that one. So right-click, refactor, rename. And it says, here, what would you like to call it? Well, I copied it a moment ago. I'll paste here. That's the exact name that you wrote in the manifest. It might be useful to also turn on rename sub-packages here, so I will. And I'll click OK. Something else might pop up here. Just continue that. <clears throat> All right. So then uh, now here, what it was saying was, over here, uh, there might have been a conflict in names, but again, sometimes these error messages are, or these little warnings and such are a little weird sometimes, but you know, I've done this several times, so you kind of have to just move forward. But here's what I've got. I did refactor and rename this one in the SRC folder, and there was one in, the, in this gen folder that had the old name also, and it did rename. So if it didn't, you might have to refactor that. So just confirm that in your SRC folder and your gen folder, they both have the proper name, the one we just changed. I still have that red X. Again, don't worry about it just yet. Um, the, uh, the, the fifth thing, then, that I want to rename inside of the res folder, inside of the values folder, we have this strings file. Double click the strings file to edit it. And there's a string here called app name, which its value is still set to example. That's the name that's going to appear below your icon on the phone itself. So change the value, and you can call it, you know, campos my SDCE, your last name. Do not rename the name. That's the name of the container that holds that value. So don't rename app name. 
very bad. Rename the value. Yes. So the length of these names becomes an issue on the user interface. Um, are you, have you found that this length of name is, is satisfactory? Um, I can't quite say because it does depend on the user interface, but this is what I've noticed on my devices. If I go to my app drawer, and I've got this more limited space here, sometimes the name is cut off. But then when I put the, the app on my home screen, for example, the name is on two lines. So there's almost like not a way to really win both ways. Either it's going to be too long here, or too short there, or it really depends on the device. So that's why, notice many apps nowadays have the, have the most concise name possible. Um, perhaps so that it fits within the confines of a screen, of the lots of types of screens that appear. So we're just going to test it, and of course you can name it again. Maybe if my last name is too big, uh, later on I can choose a better name. But it'll take a little bit of that testing. Like I've got VMC Lucky Numbers. That's a huge name, and it fits on two lines on my home screen. Very readable. But if I go over here to my to my uh, to my other screen, it, it cuts off. So it depends on the device. Um, so make sure here, just to confirm, you did not change the name of the container. It's still called app name. You change the value inside of it. And on that one, you can use the spaces and the capitalization because that's just going to show up right below your icon, and you want it to look, you know, readable. Or else, you know, if you're doing it all lowercase and that's the aesthetic, fine, that'll work. Um, so this is a file, this XML file, you want to save it. So just click the little Save button. And then I'm going to close the strings file and just uh, close these at the moment, the, all of your little open folders here. Now, for me, and this is expected, for me, or I'm expecting this, um, I've still got the red X there. Do any of you have the red X on your manifest? Yeah. A few of you. Okay, good. How many of you do not have it? You guys got lucky. Okay. What's, you guys are going to get to this anyway at, at a certain point. So um, what's happening here is I've noticed this is a symptom of loading the phone gap framework into... Uh, into Eclipse. We're using 2.9.0, so perhaps in the latest 4.0 this is no longer an issue. But um, on the 2.9.0 there's a few little weird things in this XML file, this manif Android manifest file, which we can fix right now. Um, so it's telling me there's an error. Well, what's the error? What's the problem? Let's take a look here. Even if you didn't get the error, it behooves us to, to know that we've got this problems tab down here click your problems tab and here it says one warning I'm sorry one error and six warnings so obviously we want all of those to be nothing how many of you there have nothing three of you four of you okay uh, how many of you have an error and a warning okay most of you how many only have an error okay so see this variety of things that are happening and everyone's doing the same thing I don't know, there's gremlins in the computers. So we want definitely to fix the errors, because that's going to prevent us from launching our app. And warnings we could ignore for the time being, but I want to fix all of these eventually. For those of us that have errors, I want to fix that. What's the error? If you click the little triangle, it pops up here. Avoid hard coding the debug mode, leaving it out allows pretty big error. If you hover over it, it'll it'll show complete. That's what mine says. Avoid hard coding the, the debug mode. Do you guys have that debug mode error too? How many of you have a different error? Okay, so because all of us seem to, or most of us seem to have this type of error, let's talk about fixing this error. And I'll look at your error in a moment. Um, what this is saying is uh, since we're still working with a, with a test project, an example project, it's not ready for prime time yet. It's set to debug mode. We're still, you know, we're still working out the code. We should not let our pro leave our project in debug mode when we put it out to the world. And that's such a big 
problems that it will not let us compile until we fix that. So it says avoid hard coding the debug mode. Leave it out. Leaving it out allows the debug and release builds to automatically assign one. Hard coding. What does that mean? Sounds like you have an explicit statement someplace to put it in debug mode. Yes, something explicit. This is kind of like, um, you know, we can use, if we say, uh, if we put in a value that is an exact value, an explicit value, like 19 years old, then it will never change. But if we put a variable in there, age, then the variable could change and it's no longer hard-coded. That's what this is saying. And this is saying it's on line 51. Line 51 of what? In this file right here, the Android manifest. So reading this problems panel is pretty simple, but there's a description. There's, it's going to try to tell you what the problem is. It might oftentimes be very technical. Um, what file it's in and what line is it in. So double-click your error. And that should open up the offending file, the manifest, but it opened up in the graphical interface. So switch over to the, to the text version of the file. And if you want to, again, you can double click it and then it'll jump you to the line. Obviously turn on line numbers. But that's what it's telling us. That over on line 51, and you're also going to see it on the side there, that's the error. Line 51. This is an XML file, so it's basically a value uh, and a pair. It's a pair, a value and uh, a key and a pair. It uh, has some sort of property, colon, and the specific... Uh, Thing you're affecting, like if you're Android theme, it's going to be this black theme. Android debuggable, true. Android hardware accelerated, true. The Android manifest is in this sort of format where you choose a variety of properties and set them to true or false, or large or small, or one or two, or, or whatever, according to the specification over at the developer portal. But here it's saying it's better to not hard code this. That doesn't say to put false. That's still hard coding it. Just remove it. We'll remove it in a moment. But let me show you a couple of things. We can, of course, edit the code. And if we know what to, to edit, we could. But since a lot of us are beginners at this, perhaps not edit the code yet. Let's switch over to the, um, to the application tab down here. application tab. These tabs over here will give you a graphical representation of this big old scary XML file. So if we go to the application and we scroll down to debuggable and delete that, because that has true or false, or you can delete it, that is akin to removing it in the code. I'm going to delete it, save the file, Error gone. Still have warnings, which we'll get to. Yes? Well, uh, switch over to, see how you've got tabs down here? Switch to the application tab. And then scroll down to debuggable. So make sure you've got your Android manifest file open. <coughs> Do you have, uh, look up here a moment, did you open your Android manifest file? Yes, I have So if you switch over to your code, it should be removed. So we could have removed it via code if we were confident, or we could remove it through this helpful interface. And here's the two that's on 
All right, so we uh, we changed that. We changed that, and then it um, the error went away. Now I've got twelve warnings, which I've got twelve. You might have six or more or less. We'll we'll get to those. We'll fix those. Uh, we'll address them a little bit later. But there's a lot of screens here, a lot of uh, parameters that we can set, which again we'll look at later. Because for example, what I want to do later on is I want my app. Uh, to stay at a certain orientation because right now uh, you can uh, you can go uh, if you if you put your device sideways it'll flip sideways and it's not a very good in my case uh, design like that I want to keep it only vertical oriented it's going to be one of the items in here so we'll look at that also that's why this manifest file is pretty important question uh, in the XML file, what is now 51 again, I noticed a reference to example. Is that something that we would want to change? Um, just, I believe simply changing that would cause a problem because it's referenced somewhere else in the app. Uh, this is going to be a purely internal thing, so in my experience it hasn't been a problem to leave it there because it's not forward-facing. Technically, we could change it, but again, it, I believe it's connected to something else that I'm not quite comfortable changing just yet. We could do some research on it and then confirm it. Because I also see it over here. If we go back to application, another way that, it show, that it's displayed is right there under the application nodes. Um, right there. So we could change it, but I'm not going to just yet. Okay, so um, that's all I want to do for the moment in my manifest. I've got rid of my error. That was the big one. We'll get rid of warnings a little later. Um, just to make sure everything's properly working, I'm going to launch this again on my virtual or real device. And you're going to see a little quirk that uh, you, you've, you've updated the version of the project, but the old one is still there. What I mean is that, okay, I've launched it in my virtual device, and I go to my apps, I go to the home screen, I go to the apps, and there's my, there's my app right there, Campus My SCC, perfect, but example's still there. I'm not worried about that, just uninstall it, and I see the same thing on my real device. Technically, these are two different apps, because they've got a different package name. Therefore, the device sees them as two apps. It didn't delete the example, it kept example, and it put my Campus My SDCE. So don't panic, just uh, tap and hold example and uh, uninstall it, however you do it on your device. So now the app no longer says example. Um, we're our, our, our own unique app, kind of. We still have the, the branding of Cordova. We still have that icon. So we'll address that now. But did this work for everyone? We have the app loaded. I forgot to mention this, but um, when, you, when you look at the app, Manage Classes, uh, on this device, this is kind of a low, a low end one. Notice what I did. I put the three buttons in, in three columns, and it gets cut off on that small device. Uh, are any of you running a larger device and all three icons show up properly? Okay, so a few of you. Uh, on mine over here, which is also kind of a medium, low ish end, it cuts off here too. Um, so that might be a, an aesthetic problem. Um, functionality wise, it should still work show classes. Also what I changed here uh, was that it used to be that the, that the field, the text field appeared and then the delete was below it. And as I was kind of testing it, I found it annoying because I had to scroll down to click the button. And now the button is right next to whatever I, whatever I type here to delete it. And then if I select to delete something that doesn't exist, I get a pop-up and um, uh, 
and just a little bit of a little bit of feedback. Okay, so let's talk about then further branding our app. Um, a lot of times in my experience in teaching uh, both sides of this concept, I see that people fall into both of these sides. And what I mean is that there's the programming side and then there's the artistic side. Remember, we've, over on the Android portal, we've got um, uh, design, develop, and distribute. There's the design portal and the develop portal. A lot of us, perhaps, are a little bit more on the develop side. Yeah, give me the, give me the, uh, the, the IDE here and let me code some stuff. Don't give me that, that drawing tool. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't draw a straight line. So one half of it is you know, developing the app, and the other half is a little bit of the design. We're not going to do a lot of it, but we will talk about that today which is like this. I don't want to have um, that generic icon that everyone else has. I want my own unique icon. So we're going to talk about design aspect of things. Just enough to make our app unique, not enough that you need to get a degree in graphic design. But one of the best ways to, to, um, to think about how you can um, design your own app is to see what already are the design considerations according to Android. Uh, so what I mean by that is if I look at the icons that are already built into my environment here, I get a sense of how they look. Now this is an older version. We're not using the latest uh, 5.0 which has a brand new uh, style which we'll look at in a moment. But notice this style had some uh, gradients and a little drop shadow here and there and transparency. <coughs> so if you make your icon that doesn't quite look like this it's a bit of a jarring experience. Uh, so we want to design our, our, our assets that look like they're part of the world of, of Android. And the best place to get that, uh, to get that answer is back on the developer portal. So let's open a web browser and let's go over to developer.android.com developer.android.com and remember at the top uh, we should have um, design, develop, distribute. Mine's a little bit slow but when yours loads up we're gonna go over to the design portal. Right at the very top here, design, develop, distribute. Let's go look at some design considerations. So there's stuff in here that's theoretical, and then there's stuff here that's directly applicable. Uh, so on the left side, you know, it's kind of chapter by chapter. If you go to Creative Vision, it's going to talk about, you know, an app should enchant me and simplify my life and make me amazing. You know, that sort of very artsy sort of thing. Um, then we've got, of course, the examples of their of their graphics and such. Design principles. What does it mean to enchant me? Delight me in surprising ways. Real objects are more fun than buttons and menus. So notice the icons look like perhaps something real-ish. The male icon looks like a little male icon. Let me make it mine. Like uh, let people customize your app and such, etc. So there's this theoretical stuff that's nice. Decide for me, but let me have the final say. So this is its its own section to read and to synthesize but what I want to look at specifically because what I've seen here that are that is useful uh, we've got 
like actual specifications and actual color suggestions and that sort of thing that might be more useful to us. So let's go look at... Um, so do they have any tool here for us to help uh, do the empowerment mechanisms? <coughs> Uh, they do, but I'm going to show uh, a tool that I think is a little bit more uh, universal in that we can uh, apply it to different kinds of projects, too. Let's go look over at style. And even if, you know, even if it gives us a tool, it's still going to be up to us to make our vision a reality. Uh, let's go to the style section, and here we've got, of course, you know, a glimpse of some of these icons. Uh, you probably see them, not really pay attention to them, and here's also the problem in that Depending on your device, some manufacturer most likely gave it its own skin. You know, TouchWiz or Moto Blur or whatever. They've all got their own style, each manufacturer. And therefore, their icons are slightly different than the official Google icons. So that's another design configuration um, consideration. So these examples here are straight from the Google official style of things. Let's notice how these look. Um, he goes on to exactly explain uh, somewhere over here how the how things should okay iconography. Let's look on under iconography. It talks about you're probably going to de be developing an app for multiple screens, therefore you want to provide multiple icons. It talks about a baseline, let's say it's 160 dpi. Then you've got a, a screen that would be larger, which is 320 dpi, two times, and even larger, which is extra, extra high dpi, extra, extra, extra high dpi, 640 dpi. So then it shows the launcher icon. Launcher icons on mobile devices must be 48 by 48 dp. Google icons for display on Google Play must be 512. So here it's giving us the actual nitty-gritty. Do this and do this and do this. The other ones is like very artistic and flowery and chant me and all of that. Fine. But what are the what are the icon sizes that I need to care about? Uh, so we'll revisit these but make a note 48 by 48 and then later on 512 by 512. That's the icon that we're gonna see up on Google Play. The 48 size one is going to be the minimum, one of the minimum smallest sizes. Because up here, you could have your app on a, you know, on a lower end, on a medium end, on a high end, on a tablet. So we need to provide icons in those different sizes. But the minimum is this, and then double the size for a larger size, and four times the size for the largest size. We'll talk about those exact values in a bit. Style. Use a distinct silhouette three-dimensional front view with a slight perspective as if viewed from above so the users perceive some depth. That's what we're seeing with their examples over here somewhere, like here. Look at your own device. Um, you know, this is like looking up, looking slightly down onto it. A little bit of edges here. Definitely you can see it there. Um, this is a little bit more full frontal. Uh, notice this one's got the bit of shine up on top here, a little glow, pretty simple colors, there's no crazy gradients. Oh, here they are. So, um, how many of you feel you could design an icon kind of like this? Not too many, and that's fine, again, because when you think about making your Android app, perhaps you're thinking like, yeah, it's going to be a lot of code. I'm up for the challenge. But this is another aspect of it too, the presentation of it. If you have an ugly icon, perhaps people will not be very enticed to download it, even if your description says what, how amazing they are and how you will be enchanted by it. Um, so obviously I'm not expecting you to be very fluent in in graphic design, but I want you to, to look at this is the por part of the portal where you want to look at and kind of get a sense of what my design, my icons and such should look like. It talks about the action bar and again their style of icons and such, you know, flat, not too detailed with smooth curves or sharp shapes. If the graphic is thin, rotate it 45 degrees left or right to fill the focal plane. Think about that. Let's say your icon was only a pencil. They're saying don't make the pencil vertical. 
make a 45 degrees angle so it takes up an imaginary square. This takes up the square nicely, and this and this and this. This one might not, and that one and that one. So it's probably about putting it at a 45 degree angle. Probably never even considered that. You would think, yeah, I'm going to put my pencil and it'll be vertical. But here it's saying, put it in. Well, once you know the rules, you can break them. Or if you're the boss. Right, Google? Colors. Okay, it talks about what color you should use for your um, action bar up there, but uh, further down here, um, colors for the actual apps, use non-neutral colors um, sparingly and with purpose. For example, Gmail uses yellow in the star icon to indicate a bookmarked message. If an icon is actionable, choose a color that contrasts well with the background. Notifications, icons, etc. Design tips, use vector shapes where possible. So again, this is, this is a different kind of world that you probably didn't even consider. It talks about many image editing programs such as Photoshop allow you to use a combination of vector and raster layers and effects. When possible, use vector shapes so that if, the sh if it needs arises, assets may be scaled up without losing de detail in Edge Christmas. So if you don't know what that means, there's uh, basically two kinds of graphics, raster and vector. A raster graphic is basically a grid with dots that are the colors of the icon. So everything that we're looking at here are at, at the end point a raster graphic in that it is there's a square and there's a blue dot and a light blue dot and a dark blue dot. It's a grid of colors, points. It's raster. Um, it most likely started off in Photoshop or Illustrator or some other software as a vector. Now a raster graphic, if you make your graphic that size and then later on you need to make the large version and you and you blow it up, most likely it'll lose quality because a raster graphic only has the number of pixels that it was made with. So if I made this icon 48 by 48 pixels square and I blew it up to 128 pixels, the, the software has to interpolate. It has to make up several new pixels. And what happens is things get fuzzy and low quality. You might, know, you might see this when you have a picture and then you print it and it looks terrible because you might have taken a low quality cell phone picture and printed it on a big 8x10 sheet and it looks fuzzy low quality. That's what this is saying here. Instead you want to design your graphics in vector format because vector graphics are not a grid of dots. They're mathematical formulas. This star can be defined as a mathematical formula. A triangle can be defined as a mathematical formula. A circle, any shape actually, can be defined as a mathematical formula. When you need to make a larger circle, you have, you know, r equals 7. When you need to make a larger one, r equals 12. No problem. r equals 1200. No problem. Uh, so uh, vector graphics are mathematically based. That when you need to grow them and shrink them, they'll still retain high quality. That's what it's saying here. Start making your graphics as vectors, and then the final result is a raster. But if you need to make it larger, you will be able to. <coughs> Question. It's a good application to make Well, the best one is Adobe Illustrator, but it's not free. Um, <laughs> a, a good one that is free is called, let me move it up here, Inkscape. It's free, it's open source, it's for Windows and Mac, I believe. Uh, let me load it up here, Inkscape, I-N-K-S-C-A-P-E, Inkscape. Draw freely. This allows you to create vector graphics. It's very similar to Illustrator, and it's open source and free. The problem with making ra vector graphics, though, it's not the same as opening up a raster program and getting the paint brush and drawing your graphic. Usually you're using Bezier points. You're putting a point here, a point here, and a line connects. You put a point here, and a point here, and a curve connects. It's more complicated than a raster graphic program like Photoshop, although Photoshop does have raster capabilities built, vector capabilities built in too. But this one, it's 
been around a while. They keep improving it. All of the stuff that I'm seeing here, all of these things are done with Inkscape, apparently. And for example, here, you know, that looks pretty photorealistic, but what's going on there is that it shapes. It's kind of dark on the projector, but you know, there's shapes, mathematical shapes. So if you want to make this five times larger, well, that square is just going to go five times larger, and then the built in gradient is going to scale. So Inkscape is, uh, is one I recommend. Now, these are the design considerations for graphics. We'll put them into play in a moment. Uh, but the big idea is we're try to use perhaps recognizable shapes as possible, simple shapes that we're looking on them straight on in a, in a vector program. On the left side, we've got a section for color. Use color primar primarily for emphasis. Choose colors that fit with your brand and provide good contrast between visual components. Note that red and green may be indistinguishable for colorblind users. So colorblindness isn't that people see in black and white. It's that they see perhaps red diminished. Instead of red, it looks like a kind of a brown. Or green, you know, it doesn't look like a green and maybe kind of a brownish. Um, so a lot to consider, but this is useful here. Palette. Uh, this gives you some swatches, these standard colors, and then from a, a very light pastel to a darker um, uh, tint or a shade of it, so tints and shades, and a saturated color in here, and you can actually download that and open up in Photoshop or Inkscape or Illustrator. You can download the official colors and then use them and you know, make them darker and lighter as necessary. So these are not really the Exactly. So if you follow a little bit more in this aesthetic, you'll feel a little bit more like an Android app. If your blue is very blue, it's not bad or wrong, it's just that it doesn't quite have the feel like of an, of an Android app. So then there's a section on typography. There's the official, you know, there's the official Android font, and it's got different styles and weights and such. The thin one, light, black, condensed, etc. So there's the there's that official font. We never talked about any fonts. We will. We will make a, our own font. You know, we could follow the, the default font or we can make our own interesting fonts. We'll see how to do that. But if you make your own, use your own font, could different devices come Yes, definitely. Uh, we'll, um, when I say about make your own font, I don't mean like we're actually going to make the letters, but we're going to implement whatever font we want. And yes, the device will be able to, to read it. Uh, that was a, a good question uh, in, you know, in the world of web design for a long time. If I chose my perfect font here, if a person didn't have that font on their computer, they wouldn't see it. But nowadays, with using CSS, we'll be able to load up any font we want, regardless if it's installed on the person's computer or not, or device. So then it talks about default colors and such. So there's a lot to wrap our heads around here on actual development, I mean, uh, design of the app. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm not expecting a really polished thing here, uh, but I'm going to give you the resources and the tools, and we're going to do some of this because eventually you'll want to do this once your app really you've made your app and you want to really publish it. Uh, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this tool uh, to design our graphics. Um, let's go. Actually, before that, one more thing: um, the the sizes of our of our icons. You can do this to, to see this also. Um, let's go to 
go to the to to the folder of your project wherever it is. Mine's on the desktop. So go to the example project. Notice the folder still still named the same. That name really doesn't matter to Eclipse and to Android. That can be anything you want. All those names that we changed were the important ones. So you can change that later. Not now because it's open in Eclipse. But go ahead and open that example project. And then go inside of the res folder, not the assets folder. We're going to deal with some of the other aspects of the project. Go into the res folder. And then in here, we've got several important folders. We've got drawable. And then we've got drawable HDPI, LDPI, MDPI, XHDPI. So the low DPI, the low quality one, the medium quality, the high quality, and extra high quality. Um, open up drawable folder. Look at that. There's that icon that shows up as my launcher icon. Um, if you click on it, you'll see that it's 96 by 96. Over on the LDPI, there's the icon again. That one is 36 by 36 for low DPI, medium. So we're going to make a note of these because these are the sizes that we want to eventually create so we can cover these different devices. So I'm just going to make a list. You should write it down, but I'll write it down. We've got LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, XHDPI, and then drawable. LDPI, our icon, should be 36 by 36. M is 48 squared. High DPI, 72. XHDPI is 96. And a moment ago, I saw that in drawable, I've also got a 96. Now the default icon is IC Launcher. And this is a remnant from the um, phone gap template. Uh, well, it, it's um, when you create a brand new Android project from scratch, it has that icon as a default. But we're using the phone gap template, so somewhere buried in the code it says use the icon called icon, not the one called IC Launcher. Also in the documentation I saw that eventually I want an icon that is 512 by 512, and that's the Google Play icon. That's the icon that you'll see on Google Play, as well as Amazon. Yes? Say that again? Yes. Um, right there in your res folder, I just went to each one of them and clicked on the icon, and it tells me down there 36 by 36. But then it also said other things. Oh, um, the Google Play one, we're not going to add it to our app. We're going to need it once we create our store listing. Okay, so... Um, those are the icons, sizes. And then it's a matter of creating the icon. Uh, these computers do have Photoshop. We're not going to use Photoshop because not everyone has Photoshop. Do these have Illustrator? No. So I'm going to show you this tool that I would recommend because it's free. Um, it's online, so that means you don't have to download and install anything. You can just use it from a web browser. Um, you can go over uh, to the website 
pixlr.com, P I X L R.com. Well, we would have to download it and install it and then use it. Let's go to pixlr.com. Now, Pixlr's been around a while, I would say at least seven years. And recently, they've been bought by Autodesk. How many of you heard of Autodesk before? They're pretty famous in the world of CAD, right? So um, Pixlr is now part of the Autodesk family. And for a long, long time, throughout the time that I've known about Pixlr, and I would say it's like seven years, uh, it's always been free, and they've been improving it and improving it and improving it. Very recently, Autodesk bought them, and I don't know how things are going to change. So hopefully, they still keep this free tool here. Um, for some reason, they still have ads, even though now they've got deep pockets. But if you scroll down, uh, there's various versions of Pixlr. There's, a, there's an app and such. But the one we want is to use the Pixlr editor. This is going to be like a lightweight, web-based Photoshop in your web browser. So on the left side there, click the Pixlr editor. And on the sides you'll see tools and such. But here you can create a file, open a file, load it from a website or from a library and so forth. We're going to create a new file here. So, so select create a new image. And remember, as the uh, Android uh, design portal was telling us somewhere over here, it was saying about start with the largest size possible so that you can make all possible sizes. Don't start with a small size and make it larger. You'll lose quality. So um, ultimately, my largest size is going to be we're going to make a uh, we're going to make our own size here, 512 by 512. This will allow us then to create all the sizes. And this is also the big size for the Google Play display. Name, we'll call it icon, because the easiest way to change something in a template, like in PhoneGap, is um, to use what's already there and repurpose it. What I mean by that is there's already this the project is already working and loading up the appropriate icon because it's called icon.png. If we call it anything else like my icon, then our problem is that we need to find somewhere in the code that says use the thing called my icon. Instead, we will just replace this old icon with our new icon, and then we don't have to change any code. It'll continue to work. So in Pixlr, we're going to create a graphic that is 512 by 512, and the name of it will be icon. Yes, let's turn on transparency, because also notice when you look at your icons, none of them are on like a flat square. They've all got some transparency to look behind it to the, to the to the background. Like I've got one here called Smart Share with like four little balls connected together like a molecule and it can see through it. Calendar obviously is a big square calendar but here with transparency we'll be able to see through your icon where it's hollow to see the background of your device. If we don't select that you're gonna have an ugly white background behind your icon. Very unprofessional. Click OK. And now what we've got here is our canvas, 512 by 512. Has anyone ever used Photoshop before? So if you have, it's very familiar. You've got various tools. If you haven't, I'll do a quick overview of them and then we'll start to make some graphics here. This is our main uh, project, which is currently empty. You've got various tools on the left side, for example, a brush tool. That could be the icon of my of my app. Question. So, so is this an example of uh, raster graphics? It is. Okay. Right now what we're doing is raster graphics. This tool right here, though, 
Oh, not that one. Uh, maybe it doesn't have it. The pen tool. Is there a pen tool here? Maybe that's what's missing right there. Yeah, this one might not have to create rasters. And that's our trade-off. Here's a free tool that we can access at any point, make our graphic for starting with a large size so that we can shrink it down to our smaller sizes. That's our trade-off. Ideally, maybe I would use Illustrator or full-fledged Photoshop because that does have vector capabilities or Illustrator and make my graphic that way so I can have full control. But on this, uh, you can draw. You've also got undo, just like any other software. You can control Z right on the keyboard. It takes you back. You've got a color picker. Right now I'm drawing with black, but I can change that to draw with, let's say, red. What if you want to use one of those palettes uh, that Android has? That's another one of the limitations here, because I don't see to import a palette. You would do that in, in, in Photoshop, for example, import a color swatch or color palette. But what you could do is, you know, you can, um, so here's a workaround. You can look at the, at the colors right here and then do a screenshot, print screen. Let me do that for you guys. I'm going to capture this as a screenshot and I'll put it in the network drive in just a moment. Because the point is that in, in the software we can extract a color that is in in Pixlr. We can say, give me that color. So what I'm going to do is save this the network drive and then you can open it in Pixlr so I put into the network drive something called Android colors which is just a screenshot of these colors from the website and in Pixlr I can open an image So I can use uh, I can use this uh, uh, eyedropper to click to give me that exact color, and then use it in my in my app. So I can't exactly load the actual palette, but here's a workaround. You can open this file and just say, "Give me that color right there." Uh, so what uh, what I like about this, which is reminiscent of Photoshop, also, is that as you uh, as you do things, you're gonna get a, a history right here, so you can always go back, undo several times. You made a mistake, well, you can just take it back. What's good about Digital imaging is that uh, you can have also things that you can't do in the real world very easily. Like I drew that purple color, and then I drew a little bit of this gold color, and now I've also got a, a move tool. If I try to move that, it all moves together; they blended together. But I can use layers. It's sort of like different sheets of paper. In that, on this sheet of paper, I have yellow, and on this sheet of paper, I have purple. They're separate, so I can move the yellow separate from the purple. That's found here under the layers. I've got one layer, layer zero. I can say, give me a new layer. That little layer, oh, which one is it? This one, new layer. So I've got layer two. It's on top of layer one. So now if I draw with another color, and then I get the, the move tool, 
which is this one, to move objects. I can then move, and only that object moves. They're not combined. I can rearrange these. Put the purple one above. Let's drag them. I can zoom in to get the perfect drawing. Now again, okay, well, I'm going to design, I have to design my own icon, I'm not an artist. Well, um, Pixlr has some built-in uh, shapes and such that we can repurpose for the moment to make our own icon. So I'm going to re delete the stuff that I did. I'm just going to go back to my history to the beginning so that it's empty. If you've got your own thing that you're doing, that's fine. Uh, but over on the... Let's see, they've got... They've got some shapes, drawing tools. Those are those shapes, but we've also got... Um, so these are simple, just shapes and such, but under the brush tool, we've got a few simple shapes here. If you select your brush tool and you've got uh, options for your brush, you've got a few simple shapes. So let's say You know, I can start start that as my icon, put something on top of it. The shapes, these shapes are found inside of the brush tool. So if you select the brush tool, then you go up to the brush options at the top left and choose a shape, and then you'll probably need a larger size. So you can start to create some sort of a uh, icon. Now this is only going to be the icon itself. You don't need to put your text into it because remember the app has an icon and below it has the text. So here you can use all of as much of the space here for the actual icon. What you've also got here is something you can go to the text, the type tool, this little A, and then you can click, you can write text here, but one of the fonts that you can choose is pictures. So if you get your text tool and you click and switch to font, you've got wing things, one, two, and three. That's a whole alphabet full of graphics. Uh, but I don't think you're going to see what it is until you type it. So I've chosen Wingdings 2. Capital A is like a little hand, and B and C. So you have some icons there that you can use. built into the font, but you have to kind of have a scavenger hunt to find the perfect icon within the font.
It's this little A. When you select font here, you go to the bottom. And at the bottom, you've got windings 1, 2, and 3. You also have webdings. Okay, so this opens a, a big can of worms. So what you can do is either make up what you want here. I'm going to make a very simple icon. I'm going to use some shapes, like squares and such, with some colors. And then um, I'm going to use a font to, um, oh, let me do it like this. Let me just give you a very quick idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a, a rounded square. I can't make rounded squares here, but I'm going to make a rounded square. Maybe it's going to have a little border around it. And then in the inside, it's, I'm going to choose some kind of font that has, you know, my... And then in big letters, SDCE. And then I'll call it a day, because obviously... Maybe a little gradient and so forth. So some kind of icon that's kind of like that. Obviously, we can spend a lot of time making the perfect icon, but just so that we all end up with something, uh, we're going to do something like this, and what I recommend is you use your own colors. Don't use the exact colors I'm going to use, and um, the, not the same font, but I'll kind of give you a very quick way how to make some make an icon. So uh, if you've already got your project going, then yeah, finish it up, no problem. But if you want to do what I'm about to do, and we'll take a break very soon so that you can keep working, I'm going to go back on my history, back to new image. Just take it back here on your on your history, back to new image, so that you have a blank document. So I've got here a shape drawing tool. We've got a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, and a circle. So maybe like a, maybe you want you could do the circle, sure. But I'm going to go with the rounded rectangle. And I'm going to see about perhaps making some sort of larger shape like this. And maybe, let's see, how is that going to look like that? Notice I've got the option on the top here, border size and radius. Now, if I was using something like Illustrator or Photoshop, then I could really fine-tune this because this is exactly what's going to be the size of my icon. I want to use as much of the canvas as possible. And if I was using something like Photoshop, I would really line things up. For example, this grid in the background, this checkerboard grid, is the representation of transparency, meaning that part will be invisible once we really make the icon. Obviously, we can't show invisibility, so we've got a checkerboard. But it's useful to kind of look like, where am I drawing things? So I've got here two and a quarter squares, and over here I've got not exactly the same. So if I was using Photoshop, I would make sure I've got this exactly lined up in the center. I'm not going to quite worry about it. But once you kind of draw some sort of square, you know, you can still move it around with your Move tool. And so you could choose any of the colors that you want to design this, these icons, but I'm going to go with some of the ones that are built into or that are recommended by Google.
What's also fun, um, but you could quickly get into overkill, is you've got filters, so you can add some special effects to things. Um, That's interesting. So I, I drew a simple square, and then I went over to filter polar coordinates. You've got different ways to affect your shape. Anyway, those are things you can play with. But I just want a simple rectangle. You also have some uh, in shapes like a blank open or something like that. Are, are you saying do we have that or we do have that? Where? Like an open board project, etc. Oh, where is that? Do yeah. we have any shape, like an open board project? Oh, do we have any shapes? Uh, no, no, unfortunately we don't. Uh, something like Photoshop or Illustrator, oftentimes we have, you know, some sort of shape tool, and then here is a big library of actual graphics. doesn't seem that we have it in Pixlr. So it's limited there also. You can use this tool right here, this um, okay. eyedropper, and click on the color you want, and then it'll go. Sure will. <laughs> I, you know, I never figured that out last time. I still get that when I get it. Okay, uh, we're gonna do a break in just a moment. Okay. I'll be right there. So just anything you want to do here, uh, like I said, I'm going to make a shape, and then another shape, and then I'm going to find a font and put my STC. Not too, not too amazing. Uh, this is a, a good starting point, but uh, really the other softwares is better for this. Inkscape, Illustrator, Photoshop. But I'm going to start from here. So let's uh, do a break at this point, so you can take a break or continue to work. We'll do 10 minutes. We'll be back at 8. And then we'll talk about, well, I've designed this graphic. Now I need to save it as my various sizes, put it into my project, and then now I'll have a unique icon instead of the Cordova mascot. So we'll be back at 8.